Hey, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to our VR beginner series where at this point we have a decent scene up and running. We have our XR rig, we have some hand presence, but now let's actually get to the fun part. Let's start working with some interactables. So we're going to be talking about the idea of an interactor, an interactable, as well as using some of those events, as well as some of the limitations that we have when talking about the XR toolkit. So let's just get right into it. Let's go to our XR rig here. Let's expand our hierarchy. And we're going to go to our left hand controller here, where the majority of the functionality we're going to need to interact with objects is going to go on this game object here with our XR controller, kind of like it was if you remember in the last video where we had that ray interactor. But before we do that, what is an interactor? What is an interactable? And why is that important? Well, the majority of interaction toolkits have things that represent the hand that can affect other objects within a scene. And in the case of XR toolkit, we have two. And if we come over to our hierarchy, we can actually see what those are. We can go to XR and we have a ray interactor and a direct interactor, where if we select the ray here, it's actually just gonna create a little game object here with an XR controller and all of this information that we can use if we want to try and interact with an object at a distance. So what this will do is shoot out a simple ray cast to detect for objects within our scenes and not just any objects. We usually refer to those objects as interactables. And those are specifically objects that have pieces of functionality on them that lets us interact with them in some way, whether that's picking them up, pulling them, pushing them, or rotating them. And there aren't a ton of those built into the XR toolkit, but we will be talking about the two that are available. Now for the Ray Interactor, like I said, we can grab an object at a distance. And this doesn't necessarily replicate something that is, quote, realistic. It's kind of like a force grab but we just wanna be able to grab objects that are in the close vicinity of our hand. So let's delete this Ray Interactor and let's go down to XR again and let's create a Direct Interactor. And we'll select that. Where has a very similar setup, where it has an XR controller, but in this case, instead of a Ray, it's going to use a Sphere Collider that's set as a trigger. And it also has this Direct Interactor component that is going to manage the different objects that are gonna to be touching your hand and figuring out whichever one is closest. And since this is the one that we're going to be using, we'll be talking about the settings more once we get it attached to our XR rig. Now, one of the downsides of XR Toolkit is that you can't easily have both a direct interactor as well as a ray interactor on the same game object. And I can show that to you now. So let's collapse these two. We'll add a component and we'll just say XR ray interactor. And we'll see that we get this little invalid operation that says can't add XR ray interactor to direct interactor because XR Interactor is already added to the game object. In other words, we can only have one component that inherits from XR Base Interactor. And that just ultimately means you already have an interactor on this object, you can't add another. So there may be some instances where you want to be able to pick up objects, but also use the ray for other functions because it's also used for interacting with UI elements. And long story short, there is a way of getting around this by having multiple controllers on your XR rig and switching between them, but naturally we're just going to stick to the direct interactor and we're not going to worry about that too much. But if you're working on your own project and you're trying to do that, you just need to be aware of that. So let's actually get this direct interactor hooked up to our controllers here. Now usually you can just select this here and just switch whatever controller node that we want to get our information from, which we went over in the last video. But since we already have some stuff set up here for our model prefab. We're just going to manually add it to our XR controller here. So let's delete our direct interactor here and let's select both of our controllers and we'll add a direct interactor. We'll expand that. Well, we can't look at that right now because again, multi-object editing and let's add a sphere collider. We don't need a rigid body on this because any grabbable object within our scene is going to have a rigid body on it. And we'll talk about that more once we create one. But the big thing that we want to do on our controller is make sure this is marked as a trigger. It will actually give us a warning if we don't. So let's actually just hit play so we can see what that warning looks like. And hopefully it'll come up. <laughs> and if we come down here to our console, you'll see that we actually have two warnings for both of our controllers, where it says direct interactor does not have required collider set as a trigger. So it's actually going to let us know if we haven't set things up correctly. So let's just mark that as a trigger. There we go. All right, now let's just select our left hand controller here so we can look closer at this XR Direct Interactor. 
So let's scroll down. And there's a lot of things here that are incredibly useful, but we're not going to be using everything as of right now. But let's just do a really quick rundown where this interaction layer mask would be something that we could use to make sure that our interactors are only be able to interact with objects that we designate it to. And we can use that using this layer mask. Where if we only wanted our left hand to be able to interact with a particular object, we could put all of those objects on a interaction layer and then set it here. But we won't be doing that. It's a little bit more advanced, but that functionality is there if we need it. Another thing that's really useful is this attach transform, where by default this is going to be the center of our hand. But let's say we had a custom hand mesh and we wanted to make sure that an object that we were grabbing was closer to the palm of the hand rather than the center of it. Well, we could make an attached transform and we could move it to further back on the hand closer to the wrist. So whatever object that we pick up would rest a little bit more naturally there. And then we have a starting selected interactable where as soon as your scene starts, if we wanted the user to be holding a weapon or something like that, we would just throw that interactable in this little slot here. Another thing that's particularly useful is this select action trigger where by default it's going to change any time we press and release the controller. But if you look here, we can actually change it to set it to work with different modes. Now the only one I've actually used here is toggle where if you pick up an object, you don't have to constantly be holding the grip or the trigger to be holding the object. Once you press it again, that's when it'll drop the object. But the biggest thing we're actually going to be using is this hide controller on select, which if you remember in the last video, this is the thing I was talking about for Andrew, why did we want to set up this model transform and instantiate our hand and all that stuff is that gives us access to this hide controller on select. So when we pick up an object, it's going to hide our hand. So we're just going to actually select that and we're going to select it on our right hand as well. There we go. And the interactors also have events on them. They have them for sound as well as haptic. Haptic is just another fancy word for rumble or vibration type feedback. The big thing that may be useful to you are these interactor events, where if we scroll down here, not to show, have a few things in view here, you'll notice that it has on hover enter and exit events. So for when we begin touching an object and when we're no longer touching that object to selection events for when we select a, for when we pick up an object versus when we drop an object. And if you remember, this is going to be related to this input up here. So when anytime we select an object, in other words, picking it up with our grip button, these events are going to be called. So what we could potentially do in our hand, if we wanted to, I don't know, change color or change size or something like that, we could wire some functionality up to these little events here, which we'll make a quick example of that on our interactable in just a second. But let's say we wanted our controller to vibrate when we picked up an object, we can come to the haptic events here. We could expand that and we could say play haptics on when we begin our pickup or drop or anything like that. But we're, we won't use it for right now, but you can uh, take some time and explore this on your own. One thing I will say is that I haven't had a terrible amount of luck with the duration on these. So your results may vary, but we can close that for now. And we won't be using this, so we'll just disable that. Okay, now one thing we didn't do on our sphere collider for both of these is adjusting the radius on it. Because if we look a little bit closer, you'll see that's actually pretty big. Almost the, or it is the actual size of our sphere that we created for our hand in the last video. So let's select both of our controllers and we'll just set our radius to 0.1. And hopefully that's a good enough number. And that about does it for our interactors, the things that are going to be picking up and dropping objects and interacting with them. Now let's make a simple stand in for an interactable, something that we can pick up. Now let's double check to actually see if there are any of those in the hierarchy here, which if you notice, we have a grab interactable here. And some of you may be wondering about the socket interactor. That, that's a little bit different from the ray and the direct interactor, but we may be tackling that in a different video. But let's click grab interactable here. Let's see what it gives us. Well, it gives us the components of a grab interactable, but it doesn't give us like a mesh or anything like that for a little bit of visual feedback. So let's actually not use this for right now. Let's get rid of that. And we don't need to mess with anything else on our XR rig, I think. So let's close that and let's come into our hierarchy and let's create a cube. There we go. We have our nice little cube here and let's rescale it. So it's a little bit more manageable for us to pick up easily. So I think we'll do 
0.2, I think. And let's raise it up in the Y by 0.1 so it's not going through our floor. There we go. And then let's add our XR grabbable component. So let's go to add component, XR grabbable, and it's automatically gonna be adding a rigid body for us. Now, let's talk a little bit about what the grabbable is. And I don't think we'll have time to go over all these settings, so we'll probably tackle that when we start to set up our weapon and things like that. But what this is ultimately gonna do is it's going to give us different ways for this object to follow our hand or be attached to our hand. Hence the name XR Grab Interactable. But if we looked here, if we just type in XR, I believe it's simple, we can have other interactables that can register similar events but can't be picked up. And this could be the basis of something like a door or even a button or something like that. Something you can interact with but not necessarily something that you can pick up. So in other words, anytime you want to pick up an object, we're going to be using the grab interactable here. And believe it or not, I actually don't think we need to set up anything else on this. We should be able to pick up our object without any issues. So let's hit play really quick. And that actually looks like it's working pretty well. It's a little bit difficult to see because everything's white in our scene, but let's actually fix that now. So what's currently happening as a quick recap is that the interactor on our controller, which is going to be this direct interactor, is going to be using those events for selecting and deselecting on this interactable, in other words, our XR interactable, to pick up and drop it. But much like those events we saw on the interactor for selection, we actually have those events here, where we have things for hovering, as selecting, as well as activating, which, if you recall, the hover is going to be once an interactor is going to be touching this object. Select enter and exit is going to be once the interactor has picked up or dropped it. But now we also have these on activate and on deactivate, which it's going to be that extra action that we can perform when we pull the trigger. And we'll be talking about these when we need to fire a projectile, but let's just do a quick example of using an event on select enter and exit. And maybe we'll just change the color of our cube. I think that's a good enough idea. So let's go to our assets and we're actually gonna program in this video. It took us four videos, but we're finally gonna write some code. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's create a folder. We'll call this scripts. Good old scripts. And we'll just make a really simple script for this that we'll just call this color changer. And then let's make a little prefab out of our cube here. And we'll just call this grabbable. Not a particularly good name, but that's fine. And we'll drag that into our prefabs folder again to create a prefab. And now that it's a prefab, let's continue to edit. And we can use that, or we can do that by going to this open prefab button. And it's gonna take us into this little mode here where we can make little adjustments where it's in its own little world, essentially. So let's take our color changer script and let's drag this onto our object. Let's now double click on this object and let's open it in Visual Studio. All right, so here we are within our color changer script where this is gonna be super incredibly simple. We're just gonna create two functions that get the mesh renderer of our cube and we'll just change the color of the material. Um, this is, again, where this is just meant to be a super simple example and isn't something that we're gonna be ultimately using in our project. But let's create a function first that we're just gonna call set color red. And then we'll make another one just called set color blue. Where when we pick up the object, we'll turn it red and then when we drop it, we'll turn it blue. And we want to do that by the mesh renderer. So we'll just say git component, mesh renderer. And then on our mesh renderer, we just want to get our material and then the color. And we'll just set it to color.red. I know this is not the best way of doing this, but you know, it's again, it's just demonstration. Um, and then if you're using Visual Studio, you can hit Control D to duplicate that line. And then you can hold Alt and hit down on your arrow keys to move that line down to set color blue where all we're gonna do is just set this color to blue. There we go. Then we'll save that and let's go back into Unity. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, let's take the functionality of our color changer script here and set it up with these interactable events. And you can do this multiple ways. You obviously, like we're gonna do it in the inspector, but you can also do it programmatically. But let's expand this. Let's scroll all the way down. 
And what did we say we wanted to do? When we pick it up, we're going to turn it red. And when we drop it, we're going to turn it blue. And depending upon your skill level, I'm not sure how comfortable you are with these sort of event boxes, but they're actually really simple. And these are super useful where we can have different pieces of functionality connected to each other without having to write it in our code. So let's show that now. Let's take our grabbable object and let's just drag it into these public fields here. We'll drag it in there. And once we do that, we'll be given access to all of the different components that are on this object. And naturally, since we have that color changer, we have access to it. So let's say set red, and then we'll say set blue. And there we go. And that's all the changes we want to make on our little grabbable object. Let's go back to our scene. And you can see that those changes that we made, if we select our grabbable object, you can see that we now have this color changer. And we also have our little events here. All right, so that's all good. Let's hit play. All right, and it looks like our selection and deselection events are working and our color changer is doing what we expected. And that about does it for me in this video. I think in the next one, we're going to explore interactables a li little bit more and start to set up our weapon in its activation event, as well as going over importing assets and getting them to the correct size. So hopefully that sounds interesting and I'll see you then.